Good afternoon, everybody. So we have something different in front of us today. This is a uh, half inch, maybe three eighths of an inch, um, solid MDF. Um, it has been, of course, cut down, routed, and then sanded down. Um, I started at 150 and walked my way up to 320 to give it a nice, smooth finish. And what we're going to do is we're going to work on making this a serving tray. So we've got our handles over here that I picked up today at Hobby Lobby. Um, they were a half price, so um, I was able to get a deal on them. These are actually going to get spray painted black and then sealed. So we're going to do that um, off on the side. But this is going to be coated in kind of autumn, fall co colors. I kind of want it to be a Thanksgiving type tray. So we're going to use those reds and browns and those kind of colors. I did want to show you all these. So these are little stir uh, spatulas that I got in the baking aisle at Michael's. I think I paid like six bucks for each of them. Um, I've got another one in the white. But these are really, really good. They're going to be a great alternative to using popsicle sticks. Because they're silicone, you can just wipe them off. Um, I actually mixed up all of my paints with the stir sticks, and I was able to just wipe it off in between. So these are uh, really, really good. Again, I get them in the baking aisle at um, Michael's. So before you ever pour on MDF, you have to prep it first. This MDF will soak up any water that you have in your paintings, and it will kind of give it that fuzzy type lifted look. Uh, which we do not want. So always make sure that anytime you pour on wood or MDF that you put a base coat down and seal it. I have taped the back side of it with just uh, blue painter's tape because I want a nice clean bottom. And we are going to put little risers on the bottom as well. So the white that we're going to use, this is going to be a Dutch pour. Um, <clears throat> we're using, a, looks like a mixture of bare and deco art paints, it is my pouring medium recipe. So our white color and our flood color is gonna be this uh, bare ancient ivory. So I got these mixed up today at um, Home Depot. And I just get the flat because we're going to be sealing it anyways, so you don't have to get the um, glossy. It's cheaper just to get the flat. These are paint samples that um, I think I got for like three, four bucks a piece or something like that. So we're gonna put a nice, a really good nice coat down on our MDF. Let's move this stuff out of the way so I don't spill it. Um, and y'all know me, whatever color is your flood color um, should also be your base color, especially when you're doing Dutch pours and stuff like that. Uh, your base pour or your base color should always be a color that is in your painting. So that way, if anything does show through, you don't have a color that's not in your painting showing through. Okay, that won't take very long to dry. While it is drying, we're gonna go ahead and go over our colors and our mixture ratios. So, as usual, we're gonna do the colors and I'm gonna tell you the mixture ratio. It is, um, I always tell you an order of the pouring medium, the paint, and then how much water. So again, it's my pouring medium recipe. Our flood color is our, our ancient ivory. It is the bare ancient ivory. And um, this one was 10 ounces of pouring medium, two ounces of paint, and 0.5 ounces of water. Our gold color is our Deco Art Americana Metallics Old Gold. That one is one ounce of pouring medium, sorry, 1.2 ounces of pouring medium, 0.3 ounce, point, one point, sorry, 1.3 ounces of pouring medium, 0.5 ounces of paint, and 0.2 ounces of water. Our red is our bare dark crimson, and that one is uh, 
1.3 ounces of pouring medium, 0.5 ounces of paint, and only 0.1 ounce of water because it's not as thick as the gold. Our brown is going to be our Deco Art Americana Traditional Burnt Sienna. 1.3 ounces of pouring medium, 0.5 ounces of paint, and 0.1 ounce of water. We are going to have a really this deep metallic looking red. That one is going to be the Deco Art Decor Metallics Copper mixed with our Media Fluid Acrylics Primary Magenta. So that one's 1.3 ounces of pouring medium, 0.3 ounces of the copper, 0.2 ounces of the primary magenta, and 0.1 ounce of water. And then we are going to add a little bit of black to the painting just to pull it into the handles that we're going to paint black. And we are using the bare, um, this one is blackout. And that one is 1.3 ounces of pouring medium, 0.5 ounces of paint, and 0.1 ounce of water. We're not going to use very much black. I mixed up the same amount just in case, but we're not going to use a whole lot of it. I want just enough black in there to tie the base into the handles. So this is almost dry. We're going to give it a few more minutes to dry. And then we are going to go ahead and get started. Again, this is going to be a Dutch pour. And we are going to be using my Conair Cord Keeper 1875. I get mine at Target. Link is down in the description. Um, I use the lowest setting. Sorry, the lowest heat setting. The highest air pressure setting. And I have gotten to the point, if I'm going to do a lot of blowing with it, I am using the cool button. Um, and then make sure you always have your attachment on there. All right, as soon as this is dry, we're going to get started.
All right. We are going to leave it just like that. Um, if you saw, I was holding my ponytail. Um, a couple days ago, I was painting and I went to blow in it and I came up and just had paint across my face and my ponytail was covered in paint. So I have to remember to either put it all the way up or hold it. So we are going to leave it just like this. I'm not sure if we're going to put a vinyl on this one or not um, because I really like the way it looks. But we are going to see how it dries and then we will make our decision. I'll see you when it's dry. Good morning, everybody. So it is the next day, um, but I have some leftover paint. So what we are going to do is um, we are going to use this paint to do a, uh, a clock. We're going to make a clock with it. Um, so all of the colors are the same. I probably added, since it is the next day and it's been sitting all night long, I added about 0.1 ounces of water to each of the colors. And then I did have to make a new white. Um, the white is three ounces of pouring medium, uh, 0.8 ounces of paint, and then 0.3 uh, ounces of water. Um, but it is that same uh, ancient ivory color. Sorry, it's about 4 a.m. right now, which is about, about an hour after I normally get up. But it is still early and I haven't fully had my coffee yet. But I wanted to get this done so I could get it moved out of the way so I could work on some other stuff. Um, so this is just a vinyl, a regular vinyl record. Um, grab another one from the closet here. I know that people have a lot of questions about how to pour on vinyl records. So, um, so this is of course another one. This is just a regular, just a vinyl record. And um, people are always asking how you prep them. I prep mine with spray paint. I find that is the best way to get the label covered up. So this was actually a black, of course it's a black vinyl with a black label and I spray painted it white. And so you can see how well it covered. And so now we're not gonna have that, that uh, label bleeding through the paint, except for this little stamp they put on there. It keeps bleeding through all the white I put on it. So we're gonna cover that with black and then we're gonna make sure when we do our pours that we put a puddle here to cover that up. The back side, I just put painter's tape on and then cut around the edge to uh, give us a nice clean back once it's done. And, and that's it, that's how I prep um, my paintings is, is just with spray paint. Same thing with tiles, I prep mine with uh, spray paint because it, um, it gives really good coverage and some people don't prep their tiles. Again, I do, I pretty much prep everything um, because when the paint goes over the side, sometimes it separates and you can see the tile. And by doing the, the spray paint base, it will um, help give that paint something to adhere to. So we are just gonna grab a tad bit of our, um, this one was the blackout. We are just gonna Do this. All right, and I tried to make sure I feathered that out so whenever uh, we put our paint on, we don't have any ridges. So I'm just gonna feather it out a little bit more. For those of you who don't know, feathering is basically when you're taking some paint and you're spreading it out so it's nice and nice and smooth and thin and you're not gonna have any ledges. So that, that's feathering your paint so you can get a nice consistency from top to bottom with no ledges or anything like that. Mainly it's something that you're gonna use in um, when you're prepping walls and all that kind of stuff. When I was in the Coast Guard, my first job before I went uh, search and rescue and law enforcement was um, aids to navigation, working on lighthouses and buoys and all that kind of stuff. And we had to do a lot of feathering when we were working on our boats and repainting our boats and buoys and all that kind of stuff. So we are gonna give that a few seconds to dry. I'm gonna drink a little bit of coffee and then we are gonna get started.
gonna leave it just like that and let it dry. Hopefully we didn't leave too much paint on there and it cracks, but um, we are gonna let this sit and then when we come back, we will work on our um, tray, which is drying beautifully right now. And then we will also work on this. All right, see y'all soon. Hi everybody, we are back. Everything is dried. It dried beautifully. Um, our clock even dried really, really well. I was kind of worried about it cracking, but it also dried very well. So our next step is to go ahead and we are going to um, get these sealed in resin. So grab my cups real quick. So we are using the Envirotex Light Pour On Resin. This is a one-to-one -one, um, resin uh, ratio. It is by volume, not by weight. And as always, I am using my little plastic cups with the lines on them to give me a good guide. We are going to be going to the top of the bottom level. And so we are going to go ahead and get our resin into our cups. Remember when you're using resin, always wear gloves. Some people have a resin sensitivity, so just be wary of that and um, do it in a well ventilated area. And again, always wear gloves. Um, you can also wear just like a face mask if you need to, if the resin and all that kind of stuff bothers you. The, the, the fumes from it. Um, in my, for me, I've been using resin for, I think I used resin for the first time when I was stationed in Alaska back in 2007. So 2006. So I've been using resin for a long time. I've never had a problem with it. Um, I don't wear a mask when I'm just doing these type of things, but if I'm actually doing a resin, solid resin piece where I'm doing a lot of torching, using the heat gun and really getting those chemicals going, then I will wear a mask because that's when you're getting all those chemicals. Um, I'm not torching these enough to really get that smell and that chemical going. So I don't wear them when I'm just doing this, but if I am doing just a resin art piece, then absolutely wear, I wear a mask. So just be wary, but again, always wear gloves. And I always have a can of denatured alcohol right nearby. Um, denatured alcohol is great for cleaning up resin. All right. So we are using the two cup method. So I put um, the one to one ratio in each of their cups and then I've poured them together. Now we're going to go ahead and get them stirred. And I'm going to try and zoom in. If you can see that all those strings and everything that is in there, that's the resin that is separated. It's not mixed together. So what you want to do is you want to mix your resin until it is perfectly clear and you have no strings at all. When you're stirring, always make sure you're scraping your sides and scraping the bottom of the cup. You can go in circles, but I actually kind of like to go do the over under and kind of make sure we're pulling everything from the bottom up to the top. Don't worry. So if you were doing jewelry, then you would go really, really, really slow because you don't want bubbles because we are going to be flattening, flattening this out and it's going to be a thinner layer. Um, and we have a torch. I don't worry about bubbles as much so I can really crank on my resin. All right. Now what we're going to do is, um, again, what I call the double cup method. And we are going to be pouring the resin in the cup that we were just mixing into the other cup. One of the main reasons you do this is when you're mixing your resin, you can, even though you're trying to scrape the bottom and all that, you still might have some either hardener or resin that is at the bottom of your cup. 
that might not get mixed in well. And when your resin dries, if it dries tacky, then that is because you have too much resin and not enough hardener. If that does happen, just mix up another batch. Make sure you measure really well. Mix really, really well. And then just pour straight over it. Resin is designed to ad chemically adhere to itself. All right, once you get it really mixed up, you should be able to pull it up and it'd be perfectly clear. Looks like we have a good mixture there. Alright, we are going to go ahead and get this resin. All right, that is all resin. I will probably do two coats. I normally do two coats of resin on a majority of my stuff just to make sure that it's a really good coat and give it depth. Um, I am gonna monitor this for the next couple of hours. I also have a piece that I kind of put over the top so nothing will fall into it. Um, so if you do, when you do resin something, just make sure you have some time to be able to monitor it for the first hour or so um so that way if anything does pop up any bubbles or anything like that then you can catch them before they cure into it so i'm going to give all of this a little bit of a torch just to pop the top bubbles
All right, that is it for right now. When we come back, we will um, be putting our clock together. I'll show you how we put our clock together, as well as drilling out and putting the handles on our um, tray. So I will see y'all when we come back. Hi everybody, we are all back. The resin is fully cured and it is gorgeous. Um, let me grab the clock as well. The clock is also fully cured. And so that is how the clock turned out. So that is gonna be a beautiful set. And so now what we need to do is we need to put the clock on. And normally I would have bigger hands, but right now I just have the really small hands that go, that come with the clock. Um, I'll end up switching these hands out with um, bigger ones, but I will get gold because I like how the gold contrasts. I don't want to put any numbers or anything on this because I don't want to take away from any of the colors. So it is going to be an open face clock just like this. And so to do that, we are going to take, I want to say is a 932nd drill bit that we need, I think is what I used last time. And we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna take off the back and then we are gonna drill our hole through the center. So I'm gonna move the cutting board out of the way for a second. So I splashed some paint on it or something, there we go, okay. So we are gonna take the tape off of the back Looks like some of the paint leaked through, but we mainly have a nice clean back. And what you can do to clean up these backs is you can actually just take like denatured alcohol or something like that and you can clean up the backs with that. Okay, so now that we have that off, we are going to uh, drill through the center. Be careful when you're drilling through the center, um, you can actually crack the resin going around. So do it very, very slowly. And what I'm gonna do is I have my towel down and I'm going to put because I don't want to drill through my table. And we are going to slowly drill out this hole. Let me make sure y'all are all in focus. Okay. So we are going to drill out this hole nice and slow. So we've drilled out the hole. Let's see if it's gonna fit. We might have to slowly walk up the drill bit to make it fit. Yep. All right. So now we are going to use um, the 1964 drill bit. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna slowly open that hole up because if you try and do too big of a hole, you can crack your piece. And so we are going to slowly drill this piece out. Actually, I'm gonna go a little bit bigger. I'm gonna go to 5 sixteenths. I'm gonna move this out of the way. Alright, 
and that was enough for us to pop through. So 5 16 is the whole size that you need for this um, size clock. All right, now that we have the hole drilled out, we are gonna go ahead and put on our um, face, uh, our clock face and our hands. All right, now that we have the hole drilled out, we are gonna go ahead and put on our clock and the hands. So I get these at um, Hobby Lobby. I believe you can also get them at Michael's. And as usual, I will see if I can find a link where you can purchase them on Amazon if you don't have a Michael's or a Hobby Lobby in your town. All right, so uh, the one that I get is the quarter inch deep clock. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab I can get my epoxy going. There we go. So I'm just going to pull some epoxy out. It's way more than what I need. So this is just, ooh, I don't want to put that over that. This is just my uh, Gorilla Clear Epoxy. And the reason that we're doing this is because we want, um, if we just put this on, then this whole thing will spin on here. So we want to actually lock this down. So we're going to mix this up real quick. And if you are sensitive to uh, these, these type of epoxies and fumes, uh, make sure you do this in a well-ventilated area. It does have a smell to it. So we're going to mix that up. Okay. First thing that I do is we put this on. I'm just going to put a little drop of epoxy right there for the neck piece. Give that a few seconds to dry. All right, and I think I want it to go like this. So, I'm going to have, um, move that out of the way. So, I want it to lay like this is the way the clock is going to be. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take some of our epoxy here. And we're just going to put it, I just put it on the very top. Being careful not to get it near the neck or the mechanism or anything. I just go straight across the top. And then we're just going to lay this right on here. All right. Now that that piece is on, this little kit, um, of course, comes with your clock face. And on the back of these, um, it actually gives you how you can put them on. All right. So we are going to lay this right there. All right, so these are all the little pieces. This is actually an optional piece. You don't have to use it. If you don't put um, on the uh, second hand. So first thing is uh, you put on the rubber gasket. Well, actually, we probably should have put that on the back. I forgot. Didn't put the rubber gasket on. That's all right. All right. And we're going to put that one on there. See if I can bring y'all down closer. There we go. Sorry if that made you dizzy. So we're going to put that one on. And then we put on this one. This one's can be difficult to get on sometimes. This one is the hardest. That little piece right there is the hardest one to get on. Right. 
Now this uh, clock face actually came with these little bitty hands right here. Um, but we are not going to use those. We are going to use these that I got. Alright, so you're going to put the shorter one on first. Put it on and you're just going to push it down as far as it'll go. Then you are going to put the long one on and you can see that it has a little angle. And um, this piece is actually has flat sides on it. So we're going to turn that just a little bit. And we're going to get it on the flat side so it goes straight in. Now you can do two things. You can use um, the this little topper once you put on this little bitty screw that actually holds that one on. You can put the topper on there or you can use the second hand. And I don't think I want to use the second hand on this one. Maybe we will. We'll see what it looks like. This one can be really difficult to get on. Luckily, I have little baby hands. All right, put that piece on. And then if you wanna put on the second hand, there's a little bitty hole right here, and there's a little pin on the bottom. I don't know if it's gonna focus back there for you. And you just stick that in there if you're going to use the second hand. If you're not going to use the second hand, then we would actually take this little piece off. And then use this little nub thing and put that on. And that's it. Bring y'all back up real quick. So I'm gonna move those out of the way and I'm gonna go grab a battery. There we go. And now we have a functioning working clock. All right, so we are gonna move the clock out of the way for a second and we are gonna bring our tray back in. All right, now that we have the clock all put together, I am going to put the um, handles on our tape or on our uh, serving tray. So here are the handles. I just took them outside and I sprayed them with a Krylon, um, I don't want to say it was Canyon Black, about three coats of Canyon Black, and then I did about three coats of the Krylon Spray Lacquer, and so these are actually going to go on the sides here. And then I have our little screws, if I can pick them all up. And then once we get these screwed in, I will actually cover all this up, and I'll put a couple of sprays of black. So it's going to cover the screws. But what we're going to do first is we are going to get these centered and even of where we want them. I was going to paint the screws beforehand, but as we drill them in, they're just going to get um, 
damaged, so we will do it afterwards. So I'm not going to tighten them all the way down yet. Once I get the other side in, if I try to tighten them down now, then it's actually going to spin it with the force of the drill and um, it's going to throw everything off. So we will drill them all the way fully once we get both sides in. All right, now that we have our handles on, now I'm gonna flip it over and take the tape off of the back. Okay. All right, now we have a really nice clean back. And what we are gonna do is we are gonna put a little rubber feet on the back of it. And then we are gonna wrap up this video. Um, so I couldn't really find the little feet that I wanted. They were all too long, but I did just find, all we want is just for this to go on the bottom. So it has a nice little rise off of whatever it's put on. So I just found these adhesive stickies that we are going to put on the bottom. And we're just gonna do that. And that's it. And now our tray is done. There we go. And there's our set. Thank y'all very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section and I will do my best to get back to you. Um, down in the description, all of the paint colors used, as well as links to my Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, my website, guidedbyfaithdesigns.net. Thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I will be posting this on my website later uh, today for sale. And that's it. Thank y'all. God bless.